Um, it always feels a little better when you beat Ricky. I'm not going to lie to you. And, and the fact that I could race him in the final and beat him, I mean, it's an honor. It's an honor. He's, he's, uh, you can't take away that that guy has lots of round wins. He's a crafty racer and he, he can put stuff together that most people can't. Good evening, race fans. Welcome to another episode of Reaction Time Media's NHRA Pro Mod Catch Up. We are blessed to be joined this evening after a very big weekend, a very big birthday, a very big flight home, and not a lot of sleep in the last 12 hours. Justin, firstly, happy birthday. Congratulations. Welcome home, and uh, thanks for your time. Hey, thank you. We're, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> well, not a lot uh, of sleep, but we're still going. Now, you said uh, earlier when we were chatting that you, you didn't get home until 3 a.m. your time. And, yeah. of course, it's now 3 p.m. your time or a little after 3 p.m. your time. So yeah. not a lot of sleep to be had, a little bit of celebration, hopefully. Uh, well, let me tell you. Um, finished up the race, borrowed one of my crew guys' hotel rooms, went, we all showered, and I was there with my fiance and our four children. I have two, she has two. We, we rip over to the hotel room, her and I shower, and then we towel shower the kids quickly because they take forever and a day to do anything. <laughs> we rush to the airport and we get to the Kansas City airport and there's nothing to eat, nothing. And we ha I, don't, I don't eat on race day, so I was just, I was falling over starving. Anyways, we had to go to the other end of the terminal and get out of security to go get some sandwiches and we got a little sandwich and then we had a connecting flight in Salt Lake City that would ended up being 30 minutes delayed. So we ended up getting to be able to eat inside of uh, Salt Lake Airport at about uh, 11 o'clock last night. Um, wow. Kansas time. And then landed in Seattle at midnight Pacific time and then drove three hours up here to Canada and then got home, um, went to bed and was up and out the door at work at eight o'clock in the morning. This drag racing thing's pretty easy, really. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a walk in the park. Yeah. Well, it's a walk in the park compared, I guess, to driving a 250-mile-an-hour, 2,700-pound Pro Mod. Um, 2,700 pounds? Are you crazy? I weighed 2,810 pounds on the starting line. Come on, mate. I threw you a hook. I was waiting for the bite. It's uh, yeah. you know, the, the Pro Charge boys are, are complaining how heavy they are. Everybody wants you guys to slow down. We can't put any more weight on you. So I just thought I'd, uh, I'd have a little crack at that. We had all the rule changes leading up to this event. You know, there was 1.0 and then 2.0 before you all even made it to the racetrack. Um, you guys had had some RPM taken away from you. The, the routes had had some weight uh, advantage given. That got all retracted um, and the 4.8s got a little bit more overdrive on the routes cars. At the time, I did some interviews and talked about, you know, it was, it was pretty good. The parity was pretty good. And we all sort of were waiting to see what would happen this weekend. Now, Khaled, your teammate and uh, shop neighbor, mm -hmm. went number one with a roots. Jose yep. goes number two with a with a screw. Uh, sorry, with a with a pro charger. Uh, mm -hmm. Stevie goes number three with the screw. Chris goes number four with the pro charger. Ricky and Ricky goes number five with the nitrous. And you know, you you bring up the winner of the event comes up in seventh in a pro charger. So. I think uh, there was not more than about two or three numbers between all of you. Well, so I think you're, you got to understand is that the, the parody is an ever evolving thing that I think is, um, I don't, I don't actually know that you can ever achieve it. Um, what happened with the retraction of an RPM rule and some, some changing to some roots blower overdrive and stuff like that, I, I think was, it was a great thing that happened. Um, I also, I'm going to say to you that, that yesterday's racetrack was a nitrous oxide power adders race. Um, the sad, but true part is we only have one of those power adders out there running. And, and I think that we're all trying to gauge something off of one. Um, I, I'm not going to bring up anybody's name in vain, and I'm not going to say that I know better than anybody. It's just my drag racing opinion. Um, when... Lyle Barnett was running a pro charger car. He was five hundredths behind us all the time. When Clint Satterfield had a car 
I don't know, was he 500s or whatever? They were behind. Um, what's left of the pro chargers are the cream of the crop. Nobody else is coming over with them, but everybody's telling us that have them how easy they are to run. Um, screwblower car. Uh, Ricky's last venture was a screwblower car that he, you know, put, I don't know, two or 10 laps on it and then sold it. And what Derek Gray had. Um, I think at the end of the day, um, I won yesterday. And if you go back and look, nobody made a clean run beside me. I literally was on, there was two cars on the starting line for three out of four runs by, but about hundred feet or 250 feet, whatever I was on a single. And I'll be honest with you, a, a win is a win. But this morning when I called Brad person at my tuner, I said, Hey man, like I just kind of got to thinking about this. I was making like legal singles. Um, and they're everybody going, well, that's, that's racing. And I'm going, I know. And that's why we call it drag racing. Cause usually it is a drag. Yeah. Um, something else you guys may not know if you weren't at the race, the two slowest top dragster cars are the ones that were in the final. Okay. Now, know that, but a 720 or 735 dialed top dragster won the race. It looked like it was a slippery racetrack. It's hot. It's greasy. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you didn't have heat exhaustion, you were about to get it. Uh, let me jump in and, and defend you from yourself. Yeah. You might have had legal singles in all of the rounds, but correct me if I go wrong. Round one, 587. Round two, 583. Round three, 584. Final, 586. Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything wrong, mate. There was just no, no one in the other, no, no no one in the other lane. Tell you that, like, in the round I went 83, everybody else went 82. You like, okay. we are not out there carrying the field by four or five hundreds. I mean, we're, to be honest with you, I qualified sevens. We're running in behind. You know, I don't yeah. know how I won the race is kind of probably how Ricky Smith won most of his races. He just builds a car and it goes up and down the racetrack. You beat the guy in the other lane whenever you had to. And, and, and that's just it. Um, consistency won that race, not performance. I will tell you that we had all the performance we could get out of my car. That's where we're lost. We're lost a little bit because we can't make it run any harder. And I can tell you that with the rule package that we have today, that car, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, it cannot pull any more than it has. Like when they're like, we don't want to put any more weight on you. Like I'm telling you, you put a five pound puck on it, it slows down. Okay. Like it's, so it's there. There's nothing more you can do. The spark plugs look like, if somebody was to tap the valve cover with a hammer, the, the pistons are that hot that you could drop a hole in a piston. That's like everything's on molten fire. I didn't want to go there, but you, you've sort of opened the door. Um, everybody wants you guys to actually lose some weight. I mean, they are too heavy for a suspended door car, only 115 inches long, 250 mile an hour. They're too heavy. So would you like to see some rule change next year obviously not before the end of this season but something to to give you guys the ability to still be as competitive as you are but take a little bit of weight out of these vehicles so i'm going to go out here on a limb but i'm going to go back to indy 2021 we have a driver's meeting nhra is there it gets pretty heated i'm a pretty vocal guy i'm a passionate person i actually tell one of my competitors please close your mouth because i don't want to hear it um what I'm about to tell you, you might get shocked by and go, I didn't want that on my show. That's okay. We need to do away with power adders. What's actually okay. class is we've got five. It's like, it's like polygamy. You're one guy. You're trying to keep five wives happy. It's okay. just a tough deal. We need to go back to one or two. So like, I don't care. I'm not going to, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Go back to roots blower and nitrous or go to pro charger and screw blower that you can buy off okay. at, at race car Walmart or get rid of pro screw charger and just go turbo pro charger, whatever. But the problem is, is this, you, you have five, five. If you ever seen a scale, like a pendulum style scale, well, how do you do that with five baskets? You don't like, you're trying to balance a Pentagon here. I don't, I don't understand how that's ever going to happen. Um, so those of us who are old enough, and have loved this bracket for long enough. It's been a shit fight 
since day one when it was only a roots blower and a nitrous bottle. So right. the numbers we read out from this weekend, I, I, I'm not arguing with you that five is too many to juggle. I, and mm -hmm. the polygamy um, line was, was great. It was a very good idea. But it was pretty close this weekend, no worse than it's been 20 years ago when there were only two power adders. And I understand that, but I'm going to say to you, like technology, there's so much evolution now compared to 20 years ago. I think, I think 20 years ago, if if I went home 20 years ago and figured out that if I made my magneto have more amps than I did, I did this last race, I was going to come out and find a performance advantage. We don't have that anymore. Like to find performance, you're talking like big money, like. Hey, let's try a different ring package. And you're calling up somebody and you're you're spending five times the amount for a set of rings because they're gonna make it out of some wazoo material. Or you're getting like wrist pins made out of some exotic stuff, trying to make the engine accelerate better because everybody's got the same stuff. Okay. Like it, and that's what I'm saying to you. Um the the thing that about where we're at is you're going, hey, don't you want some weight off your car? And don't you want this and don't you want that? And I'm gonna tell you, I, I do, but I'm also gonna tell you something else. I'm spent out. I'm spent out. Let's not keep changing the moving the goalposts. I, I can't do it anymore. And I and I think what but everybody's got to understand is there's there's kind of two ways of being able to afford this. And one of it is that I've been trying to explain to my competitors and to NHRA is like sometimes people can afford to go and do this type of drag racing like they have the money. But do you want to know why they have the money? Is there's two types are either either made it or he saved it. Okay. And you can't save it when all you're doing is firing through it. Correct. And you can't make it if you're at the racetrack. Right. And you you can't, um, we're going in, I think the economy is going into a very tumultuous time. I think we all know that. I mean, interest rates are getting lifted at a percent at a time up here in Canada where they're saying, and we're looking for some blood in the streets and then we'll know that we've made an impact. And then I got this drag racing sanctioning body kind of wanted to do the same thing to my class. And then I'm showing up there and I'm only racing against 12 cars. Sponsors don't want to give you money to race against 12 cars. They want they want 32 cars. They want a bloodbath just to qualify. Which was what it was four years ago Yeah, when it was a pay-to-play type of situation. That's right. I used to pay when Molinari and I had a team together. We'd pay $5,000 to enter a race just to buy a provisional spot. And um, it's changed a lot. I think it's still the best game in town. I think the payouts are the best. I think the competition's the best. The safety is paramount. The racetracks are on point. If they tell you you're going to run at 3 o'clock, 95% of the time, you run at 3 o'clock. I got nothing to bad mouth about it. It's just other than it's it's this this five power adder thing, I don't think it's helping. I think that it's always – nobody sets out to say, hey, I want to cause pain. Everybody goes, let's yeah. let's 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 do things to make it more attractive. Let's, let's get more cars here. I don't know of any cars that have brought over. Maybe Stan Shelton when he came over the screw bar. Yeah, that's about the only one that I think we can claim. Right. Um, so it's, <clears throat> is it the five power adders, Justin, or is it the perfect storm that we've had? You know, the, there has been $6 a gallon, US dollar a gallon diesel. I know I'm talking to a Canadian. Um, there has been COVID. There is shutdowns. You guys couldn't get down here and race for a year. Um, all of those things have hurt the class participation numbers. Well, uh, or is that being swept under? It might where are we be, at? Might be a sin. I don't know if you in at Reaction Time Media would call it a competitor, but another media guy told me last week that in 2022 there's been 171 pro mods gather points in some sanctioning body. Okay. And we've only had I don't know the number, but let's say 17. Okay over an nhra but maybe it's 30. yeah i think it's i think we're it's about over, we're 19 over. i think 19 is the number okay so that means we've 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 had a 10 plus percentage tap in rate where's the other 90 percent of the cars i get it they're six dollar diesel but i mean at the end of it all what's your fuel bill to run a pro mod truck and trailer thirty thousand a year so if the fuel doubled you went from 30 to sixty thousand. To run one of these cars is $500,000 a year. So if you went and added and your budget went from 500 to 530, did that stop you from racing over there? I mean, like I just told you, it is the biggest payout. Yes. 
I understand what you're saying. That might... I, I can't hang my hat on the inflation. That math adds up, but isn't the dollar a little bit like pounds? How do you save a, a thousand? Or how do you save a hundred pounds out of a race car? One pound at a time. Now, if you're paying thirty thousand dollars a year more for fuel, you're paying twenty thousand dollars a year more for motels, you're paying ten thousand dollars a year more for flights, yada yada yada. Oh, I, I mean, it, it all starts to be a death of a thousand cuts. I agree, but I'm also saying to you that it it doesn't have that prestigious feel that it used to have. Agreed. That's like when I'm at the races, it just it doesn't feel like it used to saturday afternoon was the best part there were 32 of you all beating the crap out of each other yeah trying I, to make a 16 car field yeah yep yeah. and that's i think and don't get me wrong i think all of us drivers still get along maybe actually better than we used to i think we all we all truly love the sport we love the class awesome uh, when one of us has a problem whether it be a big catastrophe an engine expiring or a tag the wall or a big wreck or anything you know we're all over there and it's you know we have a giant group chat if, if it's somebody's birthday or if it's this or if it's that it's we're we're always trying to you know we're, we're, we're i would say as a family maybe we're gelling a little bit better i don't think that we get at each other as hard as we used to well i think that's great to hear from someone on the inside because i i believe that you are doing that on the outside with trying to rebuild. I believe there has been a perfect storm of COVID, of parts shortages, of $6 diesel, of some uncertainty when the Pro Charger had a little bit of an advantage for a little while and some people got their noses out of joint. But I think, and I think uh, someone else we interviewed has talked about, you know, no prize money for, for a couple of races. Things were a bit sketchy. All of that, you guys have pulled together as, as a group. It's, as you said, it's now the bet best paying game in town it's always been the most prestigious it's always been the safest it's the only quarter mile um it's the place to be if you want to go pro mod drag racing right yeah i mean it's it's i'm still doing it because i love it what what is deterring me personally is is like the, the 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 rule changes and i think the biggest thing is is how there's not shared data like i don't know why we don't have a public spreadsheet that is like freedom of information where it will show every run, every race, like where we can, you can look at it and go, I don't got to have a PhD. I can see a rule change coming for this power adder. And it might be the one that just car count sucks, can't get any wins, qualifies horribly and all that. And it, let's just say that that was turbo. And you're looking at this and you're going, that turbo guy is going to get some help here soon. Cause I can see he's down here in the ditch. He needs a hand up. Or I, I, I'm just saying, if we had a database where common sense would allow you to look at it and draw your own conclusion, right? Do you do you not get those sheets between rounds? The the back of the qualifying yeah, sheet gives but, you that. But when they when they make when they make rule adjustments, they never refer to that sheet. Okay. Right. Fair call. Or they Fair will call. have some oral backup, which will be like, hey, pro chargers go up and down the track way too much, so we got to make some changes. It's like, well, what does that have to do with it? Maybe the Pro Charger racers are just better racers than the other power adder. You know, so to my point, I don't want to sit on here and badmouth anybody. No. I think things are going the right way. Awesome. But I'm going to tell you that it's hard. There's a few things as a racer in the class. Gotcha. It's hard to get sponsors when there's 12 to 15 cars coming. It's hard for me to keep, like, once bitten, twice shy. So... Like how many times do I got to get a rule adjustment and say, oh, this is just good. This is great money. Just keep spending. Right? Because okay. my original NHRA car is still legal over at PDRA or Midwest or NMCA or any yeah. of those other bodies. Okay. Right? Like my rear gear, my my um, gearbox on my Pro Charger because they've changed all that, right? I don't okay. even have a rev limiter anywhere, but I have a rev limiter at NHRA. Let's talk about the positive. You've got a Wally. It was a great weekend. A big, it was awesome. a, a big birthday celebration. Yeah. Um, cars shiny side up. Looked like it didn't do any damage. What happened in Q in um, Q three? You you pushed back after the burnout. 
Well, I mean, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, some people wouldn't tell you, they would just say we had some technical difficulties. I'm just going to tell you the truth. We, um, we are behind. If you look at my car in Q2, I want to say it went 241 miles an hour. 242. Yes, sir. Um, we're just behind. Um, when I'm telling you guys that we are about to take the kitchen sink out of the, the, the hauler and put it in the passenger seat because we cannot figure it out. Well, what happened was, is in between Q2 and Q3, we, we have a smoke machine because I'm an old turbo racer, right? And in a okay. turbo, you have a smoke machine because when the thing don't spool, you've got a boost leak. So we hooked the, the, the smoke machine to my Pro Charger car and we did find some little weeps. So in order to charge from the Pro Charger all the way through and you, you, you tape off the zoomies and you hook it up to the Pro Charger and get all the smoke through there, well, you have to open the throttle blade so that it fills the intake manifold, and they forgot to hook the throttle cable back up. Okay. That's what happened. So the car idled very nice. <laughs> Pulled her into gear, and then when I went to drive forward, I was like, uh, I don't got a throttle cable, guys. Your right foot was not connected through the throttle body. I got so much return spring on the pedal and the throttle body that you can't really tell. Okay. Because it's stiff. Yeah. So you're it leaning into it and nothing's happening. And when it's so hot like that, you just fire the car, make sure it starts. You don't rev it up. So that's why, like, it was, yet again, we're talking perfect storms. It was, and it was it was a mistake. Well, if that was the only mistake you made and you walked away with a Wally, it wasn't a bad weekend. No. So no. Talk, talk to me about Branded. It's, uh, we've spoken about money. There's going to be extra money on the table, the D-Wagon shootout. Um, you know, how, how does that affect a drag racer driver when – qualifying is no longer qualifying qualifying is going to be worth each each lap could be worth 10 or fifteen thousand dollars i have changed my attitude um last year i was i was really out there i wanted to prove something i i i was in a great position in the points i i just put a bunch of unneeded pressure i'm not going out there for fun the first of july weekend or fourth of july weekend we brought mine and Khaled's car all the way back here to vancouver british columbia canada and we raced it here for our home fans so going to brainerd and everybody going well that's all this fuel money this is where i'm saying like it all depends what you're trying to do so for me going to brainerd yeah our shop is in calhoun georgia so they got rid of atlanta dragway well that sucks because we had a nice nhra drag strip within an hour yep um I guess where my answer to to, to, to to run it to you slowly, I want to go there. I want to have fun. I want to come back and I want to barbecue with my teammates. And I want to, you know, stand on the starting line if I'm eliminated and cheer on the rest of my Bowerain 1 racing team. I want to go over to Stevie's pit and ask him, why would you come up slow? Or Stevie, congratulations. I can't believe how great you're running. Or Khaled, you know, like that's where I want to be. Can I help you pack your parachute? I want to go there and have fun. I think that it's it's amazing what D-Wagon has done for our class as a company. I think it is, it is, it is epic is the word that they're putting on the shootout. I think we need more of it. I think we need to take the tracks that are less attractive and make them more enticing. I don't know if it's shootouts or if it's some little tow money or if it's a prorated tow money, like, Hey, we've got $20,000 for tow money and we're going to uh, prorate it. So whoever drives the furthest gets 2000, whoever drives the shortest gets 200 bucks, whatever it is. Yeah. Stuff like okay. that, you know. That sounds like a good plan. Yeah. So you look, you sound like you're going for a fun weekend. The zoo is obviously the place to have fun at. Yes. Um, but you're coming off the back of a win. You're now only only 200 points behind Chris. Um, yeah. You're only 100 points behind Ricky out of second place. Uh, you, you're still going to be pushing, pushing to take home both those trophies on the weekend. Yeah, I mean... As I said in my interview yesterday, Chris Thorne has to make some big mistakes, and the rest of us got to make some backflips as drivers, yep. and owners, and crew chiefs, and crew members, and all of it. Every like for you to come around is like, um, you know, the best of seven games in a hockey playoff or the World Series, and you're tied in the bottom of the ninth, and all of a sudden you just have this epic inning that you could never have again. It's the same thing here. And and good for Chris. He's earned it. Um, I'm not saying it's over. Um, yeah. What I will say is, is when you are in the lead like that, um, you have everything to lose and everybody behind you doesn't because they've already lost it. And that's kind yeah. of where I want to stay. 
I wouldn't want to go into first place right now. I would want to kind of get them on the last lap if this was a roundy round race. Yeah. Okay. Because that's the best place to be in when you're sitting behind and you get to have that little fun giggle, right? The pressure's not on you. No. So the pressure's not on me to go there and win the shootout either. The pressure's on me to go and when I leave on Sunday to say, that was an amazing time and I can't wait to go to Indy. Not sucked and I don't really want to go to Indy. (laughs) That's the alternative. Now you spoke to sponsors. Stevie's spoken about um, Bahrain as a, a primary sponsor. You, you guys share that. You, Stevie, um, Khaled have got a, a sponsor as the same sponsor across the, as your major sponsor. He always talks about they're, they're a great sponsor to have. They, they just expect you to do your best. Um, to have that support must be very reassuring for you, but you've got plenty of other local people and other sponsors that help you as well. Yeah, so... Yes, we are. I am also in the in, under the same umbrella um, of the Bahrain One Racing Team, sponsored by Sheikh Abdullah, and and his team over there in his his very beautiful country. I've been over there and and met him personally, and been to the racetrack and done all those things. And 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 he actually phoned me yesterday and and just probably actually spent more time, um, you know, telling me to have a great birthday than he did about <laughs> drag race. Like he said, That's hey, very the- cool but it's your birthday and your family's there and I want you to have a safe flight home. Like you've never met more of a gentleman than him. Um, So that is nice to have that. We don't have that um, performance based sponsorship, which I think is a blessing. Um, But yes, I own a business called JBS equipment. We manufacture farm machinery and a lot of our sponsorship is, is on business to business relationships, but I do have others that are just racing related sponsors. Well, that's, as you said, it's a, a $500,000 a year game to play. So it's all of those are absolutely essential for you to be able to do what you do. Right. All right, mate. We uh, can't wait to see you at the zoo. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not you're going to have more fun on the track or in the zoo by the sound of it. But uh, as, yeah. long as, as long as you come back safe and mm-hmm. hopefully maybe some points a little closer to Chris and a little closer to Ricky, you, right. you'll be a happy man. Well, and I think that's what I what I what I also should say is is in one run your your whole world can change. If you remember a few years ago, Chris crashed and he was in number one in that point. Yeah, I was in number one when I crashed in Brainerd last year on a legal single. Um, yes. so the whole shit happens thing can actually happen. Um, and I don't wish that on anybody. Um, but you can get lost. You can break a chassis. You can things can happen. Um. And, and whatnot. And I'd like to take a minute and just thank all my sponsors. Is that okay with you? Absolutely, sir. Okay. So I'd like to, as a, you know, I'd like to thank um, the Sheik, of course, and the country of Bahrain. I'd like to thank all the people at JBS that work really hard. Um, Rad Torque Tools is also on board helping us. Uh, Total Dairy Solutions, um, GNS Freight, NGK, NTK, um, Wage Axe, Impact Safety, TD, TD Steel, Postma Farms, Trojan Tracks. Reliable Tube, Pro Charger, um, Mac Chain, Dynamic Tire, Eaton Hydraulics. And I'm sure there's some I've listed or I've missed. Um, and we would like to ask you guys to uh, please follow us on our social media and give us a like or ask a question. Or if you want to yell at me when I do a bad job of driving, that's cool. Uh, you did a great job of driving this weekend, mate. It was a fairly treacherous racetrack. I think uh, your opponent in the final... He made he made he was qualified number one, and I think you know Ricky's love him, hate him, respect him, whatever. I think everybody respects Ricky's driving ability, and I think three laps out of his seven on the weekend, the car was almost on two wheels for the first two hundred feet. So, and I don't want to say this, and somebody get upset with me, but Ricky is like the John Force of Pro Mod. He really is. He is the greatest of all time. One day he will retire and we will miss him dearly. He, um, you, you can have a love hate relationship with him. And I've had both. Um, and it's okay to have multiple relationships with one person. Um, but I will tell you that, um, it always feels a little better when you beat Ricky. I'm not going to lie to you. And, and the fact that I could race him in the final and beat him. I mean, it's an honor. It's an honor. He's, he's, uh, you can't take away that that guy has lots of round wins. 
he's a crafty racer and he he can put stuff together that most people can't i think the goat reference in in pro mod is fair he is the winningest nhra pro mod racer uh, ahead of your teammate stevie fast uh of all time yeah. and he can do shit that people shouldn't be able to do well and i mean i'll be honest with you to this day he shows up i would say with the lowest budget yes and food he just doesn't barrel through cash he has the least amount of crew right and the maximum amount of results like i mean that calculation right there makes him a great he's great at his job he's great at his craft well sitting watching the final on the weekend my wife nicole and i were sitting there and she said why don't they make more of a deal that there's ricky and chad that's it and as you said you you do that equation mm -hmm. the lowest money lowest crew highest result yeah you got, there's, there's got to be a multiplier in there somewhere that's working well say he's the absolute lowest but he as far as financial spend like i'm not saying that he's out there but i'm just saying to you like yeah he, he i've raced with him he races frugal and he's smart smart with his money like you can't what what can i say to you he's an entrepreneurial racer i'm not i'm an entrepreneurial in my business i yes. go to like like a golf game or fishing yeah this is how he puts food on his table it has to work <laughs> he great on him awesome all right mate we'll wind it up there and uh i'll hang around i'll have a chat with you after this but uh thank you so much for your time and hopefully everybody got a little bit of an insight into who the latest nhra pro mod racer and winner is tonight hey thanks for having me on your show it was an honor thank you